And hello everyone, welcome back to another Flask tutorial, I guess. So currently I have this project. Now it's a Flask app and as you can see here we have our net and it's a bit more of a complex application compared to the usual ones you see because when I was googling this everyone had these very basic applications that they showed examples of which I couldn't understand because this is how my application looks. It's a one init file and in doing all of the other stuff using blueprints and whatnot, you know, this is what I usually use to run it. I just export my app, then I put it in development mode and then I say flask run, as simple as that. And that gets everything to run. But I can't access the website from, from Docker. So just to give me an example of what I mean here with I can run it, if I go run and here I just click on that link, I say, or how, how do I open that? I think I, there, follow link. Okay. Now, this is a, this is basically it. Doesn't look great. It's just an example, but that's it. I, I can open it up and I can actually use it. That's the main point that I'm trying to get across here. Now, it's pretty difficult to kind of get this to work in Docker, or it was, until I figured out how to do it. Now it's super easy. So first of all, you need to get the requirements your Python project needs, this project right here. So for that, you can just say pip install and then pip rex. And this will get all of the, allows to get all of the requirements needed by pip for this project. Okay. Then after you have installed it with pip install, you can just say pip rex. And if you do that, you'll get a requirements.txt file. And as you can see, my only requirement is flask 2.0.2. This here is very important because we can use it to install a bunch of requirements to our Docker container. Okay, now we need to create a Docker file. So uh, maybe just outside here, so any file and then docker file. Here we go. Now we can say from, and then you can specify the Python version you want. So I'm going to say Python, and I specifically want Python version 3.9.7. You can go lower, or if you possibly can also go higher, but I use this on my machine here, and I know it works, so that's why I'll use here, because if I go Python slash version, it's the one I use here and I know it works, so I want it here as well. And then we can just say dash alpine. Now this is the distro you want to use. It's the Linux distro. So it's optional to put this one here. This one is just very small compared to something like Ubuntu or whatnot. So it's like five megabytes or something. So pretty small. Then once we have that, we can change the work directory and I'm going to change it to slash Steve studies. You can change this to whatever your project is called. I'm going to change it to this because mine is called Steve studies. Then we can add what is here into Steve studies. Add, I believe is also the same as copy. So if you want to use copy, I believe that works as well. We have basically went and we have moved our work directory to here. And now we have basically copied everything from inside of here into that work directory. Now we need to install all our requirements. So we can say run and then Python. And I believe you can just say Python, but I like to just for safety's sake, say Python free, because I know if you say Python free, it's going to go for the Python free version. Dash M for module pip install dash R and then requirements.txt. So basically we're saying install all of the requirements inside of this requirements.txt file. Do that. Now, this is kind of important, depending on how your project is structured. First, I need to put out a few environment variables because as you can see here, I export two environment variables. I'm going to copy these that I export. I'm just going to paste them here. And then I'm going to change this to env and then env. And then this is the environment variable name and its value. 
If you don't really know how this works yet, I do recommend you go learn a bit of Flask. I have a tutorial coming up very soon, so stay tuned to my channel if that's what you're interested in. All right. Now that we have that, we can say CMD because this is the command that will run. Let me just boom. This is the command that will run once you start your file. I don't know if it has to be in an, in an array, but I usually just go flask run. And this part is very important because this will determine if you can access your app from outside of Docker, because I couldn't get it to run without this. Dash dash host. You have to add this flag. 0 0.0.0.0, .0 .0, so four zeros. This right here allows Flask to basically let you run this application from outside of localhost. And then we're going to expose the port 5000. So we're going to expose it. This will allow us to use port 5000 because mine is going to run by default on port 5000. Okay. Now that we have that, we can build Docker. So Docker build, and I'm just going to say dash T, or uh, let's go example, just to give you an example, and then dot. This will build the Docker container. I have to put in my password because I'm on Linux. And then now all we have to do is wait to continue to the next step. And here we're getting a manifest for Python colon 397-alphine is unknown. That is because I spelled alphine incorrectly. For some reason, I always do this. Let me just fix that. So it's A-L-P-I-N-E, not what I said. Now we can try it again. And there we go. It's finished building. That was very fast. Now we can say docker run dash p for port. Then it's the port you want to be able to visit it on. I want to visit it on port 5000. Then it's the port that you want to access from your Docker thing that's running. And that's port 5000 because that's also what we exposed here. And that's also what Flask is going to run at. Or run on, should I rather say. And then example, because example, there we go. Because that's what we called it right up here, example. Now, once you save that, you'll see this right here. Now, this is where you want to be. So I'm going to just click on that, follow link, and boom, there we go. It's up and running at this port right there, or that URL right there. And yeah, as simple as that. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I hope you can all as well now run your Flask application in a Docker container. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all again in the next tutorial.